also filming this on my iPhone. My mom has a stage four pancreatic cancer and she wanted me to be at the conference and she wanted to see the video. So I'm not sure when this one's gonna come out. So I'm just gonna film with the, the iPhone also. Um, so I know it's late in the day, everyone's tired uh, and I'm probably gonna throw at you perhaps the boldest and most obnoxious uh, presentation you're gonna see uh, probably the entire uh, week, which I hope that's true. Uh, so here's the paper I wrote. It is uh, history's first paper in the academic literature to logically prove that consciousness is non-local. It is a non-local physical event uh, and that it is not algorithmic. It cannot be created by a digital computer. So what I'm going to try to do in the next 15 minutes is a simplified version of this proof. So what I'm going to start with is what I'm going to call an assumption of locality. So locality simply means um, that let's imagine that a conscious state, the state that you're experiencing right now, is produced by an underlying physical state, which is physicalism. But more specifically, it's produced by a local volume. Now, of course, many people think that volume resides within your skull, uh, in your brain, but it doesn't actually make any difference. So um, for example, is uh, Einstein, when he's playing the violin right there, is his conscious state at that moment produced by what's inside his skull, by what's produced by his upper body, his whole body, the whole uh, universe, it doesn't actually make any, well, not the whole universe, the whole earth, it doesn't really make any difference as long as you recognize that the assumption of locality means that a given conscious state is produced by a local volume. So as a reminder, I don't know how many of you are physicists or, or are comfortable with physics, um, but just keep in mind that in any local volume, there's always a limited amount of information, uh, quantum information uh, or any, any kind of information. So I want to ask what you think about this before I proceed. Um, so let's start with the assumption of locality. Set aside whether or not you actually buy it. Just assume it for the moment. Assume that your current conscious state right now is entirely produced by a local physical state. Maybe you can just say, it is entirely produced by what's inside your skull. Make that assumption at this moment. Next, let that existing state be destroyed so that you no longer exist. And then let that state be recreated elsewhere in space time on Venus or whatever. Now, it could be recreated because it is taken apart and put back together, the, you know, the, the, the brain is taken apart and put in, into a brain in a vat on Venus, um, or it could just be a random quantum fluctuation in some distant galaxy. It doesn't make any difference because it's local and there's, there's finite information in that volume, which was the assumption of locality, um, then um, let that state be destroyed so you no longer exist, and then let that state be recreated elsewhere in space-time. So here's my question to you. Again, if you assume locality, please answer the question. When B happens, do you experience it? And just take 15 seconds, make a decision. If you assume locality, if, B, if A and B happen, do you experience it? Oh, experience, what's next? And being at this conference means you've thought about this before, you have to have an answer. Yes or no, it's either one, of, it's one of the two. Please commit your answer, write your answer down. Uh, I've already thought about this. So if I can be so bold to ask, did anyone say no? No, how many people? A lot of people actually, oh, surprising. Well, um, then that means this talk isn't really for you um, because if, if you already think the answer is no, then you already agree that mind uploading, uh, conscious AI, human teleportation, et cetera, are impossible. Because if, re well, because if recreating, if you just say that recreating, if, if what creates you is in this local volume and recreating it elsewhere doesn't create you, well, then what's the point? So the talk is really to everyone else who said yes, of course, if you copy what's in that, uh, in that volume elsewhere, it's going to create you. I can't tell if everyone is confused or not. So we're going to start with this uh, assumption. If consciousness is local. So let's create this conscious state C1 from some underlying uh, state, uh, some physical state. Now here is a light cone representing, of course, what's 
Um, what's outside of it is not causal. What's inside of it is causal. And now let's take apart that underlying physical state and recreate it elsewhere in space time. But it's within that light cone because that information has to be within that light cone. Well, a moment later, as you asked, what's, what do you experience? Well, there's going to be some next conscious state that you experience. Now, what if then, of course, then that has its own light cone. Now, what if you now create a space-like separated instance elsewhere within that original time cone? You should be able to because you're just making another copy of the exact same thing. Well, it also has its own light cone. Now, if the next conscious state of that one is C2, we have no problem here. It's the same person. You've already said that, yes, this is you. And of course, this also has to be you. There's no problem. Here's where the problem arises. What if, it could have been either one of them, due to some quantum, quantum fluctuation, for example, um, that next conscious state is, say, C2 prime. So just let this sink in just for a moment, this situation. How much time do I have? You have um, plenty of time. You've got uh, 20 minutes. I've got 20 minutes? Excellent. Okay. Uh, you've got nine, ten minutes. Okay, nine, nine, ten minutes. Okay. Now, here's the question. Which conscious state do you experience, C2 or C2 prime? There's only three options. Logically, right? It's one of them, or it's both of them, or it's none of them. Just out of curiosity, if you don't mind playing along, who thinks the answer is, no, you don't experience any of them? Who thinks it's both of them? Many world's people. And then who thinks it's one or the other? All right, now here's the problem. I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't. No, he's, I think he's going to answer your question in a minute. Okay. So here's the problem. Yeah. I don't mean, I just think both is not meaning both at the same time. Right? Well, here's the problem. You can't say at the same time because there is no simultaneity here because we're talking about light cones. Okay. The question is do you experience one of them, both of them, or neither of them? Well, this whole notion of light cones is where we run into problems. Because light, what light cones, how many of you are, 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 are not familiar with light cones? Okay, so everyone's familiar. So there's, there's a causality problem here. The problem with A, neither, is that we've already established by the assumption of locality. Again, this is all based on the assumption of locality. If consciousness is in fact local, and you say you, you, you kill it here and recreate it here. Oh, you don't see the, the mouse when I move it. Okay. Um, when, you, when you kill it here and recreate it up there, that that is you. You've already accepted that. So it can't be neither. And you might say, well, hold on a second. Actually, once we created this second version, then it creates a problem there, so that can't happen. The problem is, in space-time, we know that there can't be any causal relationship between these two events. Therefore, there's no way for the universe to know whether or not that, that has been created elsewhere. So we already know the answer cannot be neither. Well, you might say then it's both. But the problem is, if you experience both, it requires having information from C, uh, in state C2 and C2 prime and experiencing both of them. But you can see, again, they're outside of each other's light cones. There cannot be a causal relationship between these. So it cannot be both. And you say, well, I'll go back to the original point, it's one or the other. The universe chooses one of these two. But once again, there's no way for the universe to choose between the two options. The universe doesn't know, it, you might say, oh, this one's closer to the original, but the universe doesn't know that. It's closer in the sense of, uh, uh, of space time, but there's no way for this to send a signal back to this and say, no, you can't be created because of that. I have no idea if I'm throwing everyone off. But in any event, I'm going to keep moving. So it can't be neither, it can't be both, and it can't be one or the other. What that means, again, the, the, the entire assumption we made was that if consciousness is local, these are the only three options. It results in a contradiction, which means 
the consciousness is non-local. And that's fundamental, fundamental and weird. It means that there is no enclosed volume in the universe, the information of which produces your current conscious state. It also means a conscious state can't be copied or repeated for the exact same reason. But then, because software, algorithms, just a list of instructions, can be copied, but if conscious states cannot be copied, then a conscious state cannot be algorithmic. It therefore can't be produced by a digital computer. Can it be produced by a quantum computer? Well, quantum mechanics we know is non-local, so there might be some relationship between quantum mechanics and consciousness, but that's, that isn't necessarily the result here. Uh, mind uploading is, possible, is impossible because consciousness cannot be produced by a digital computer. And then therefore, artificial intelligence cannot fundamentally ever be conscious as a logical impossibility. Thank you.